you, it's Josh here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Theme Park Tycoon 2 tutorial where today it's all about B&M coaster supports, specifically for steel coasters such as the Flawless Coaster or the Corkscrew Coaster, etc, etc. Last week we had a tutorial on how to do catwalks right here which you can find down below and in that video I showed off these little supports right here a bit and as I promised in that video today I'll be showing you how to build these supports right here in Theme Park Tycoon 2. Now before we get into it right here I feel like it's a good point to mention that I'm not going to be showing you every single roller coaster element. I'm not going to be showing you every single thing that you can do with these supports because that would take forever. What I'm going to show you is on these two elements right here. So kind of half of a cobra roll and also a loop right here as well as a chain lift. And then you can take bits and pieces from what I'm going to show you here and actually apply it to your own coaster elements. So let's start off here with a chain lift, shall we? Now I'm going to be using the flawless coaster through this entire tutorial right here. Although feel free to use any coaster you want right here that, you know, actually fits in. So I've just placed down some flat segments right here and then I'm going to get our chain lift which I'm going to put at 15 degrees right here and we're just going to rotate that up and bring it all the way up now. At the top of the chain lift I recommend you get 15 snapping on the rotation and 10 on the length right here and you just bring it out by one go like so and then for this it's a little bit difficult to really show perfectly but what you just want to do is bring this to about five right here and just try and bring this chain lift so it's down just a little bit but not completely and bring that down just a little bit more with your normal stuff and then back to flat eventually like so that'll just bring you a sort of, you know, thing right here that we can bring the chain lift down. Of course, we want to turn off all of the actual default supports right here. Of course, we don't want those because we're going to be making our own. Now, let's start off right here on one of these actually slanted bits. What we want to do is just come into our primitives and grab a primitive cuboid right here. Anywhere nearby, we just want to place this in right here on precision build mode and we actually just want to bring this into the center of our spine. Now, if we just go onto no snapping, we want to bring this down just about until it comes uh, to about there, just so it, you know, is very, very close to not actually completely hitting the spine I guess and we can place that in right here and now it's time to do our diagonal parts so when our coaster is actually going up on a slant like this what we want to do is angle it about 45 degrees or just angle it in some sort of way but long story short what we want to do is just bring this here on 45 degrees this will change depending on the actual you know incline that you've got right here and stuff like that but I'm just going to go for 45 degrees I'm going to bring one in like so and then on the opposite side right here we're just going to bring this out on 11.25 degrees I always bring at least 11.25 on a road on, on an angle right here because this is our connector piece right here we're just going to paint that the exact same color not with concrete but with metal of course and we're just going to paint that the exact same color that we're using for our track right here and now we need to come into this piece right here by just holding shift and click on eyedropper and we want to look for a cylinder scroll all the way along until we get this piece right here and we want to just line this up like so oh my alarm's going off to wake up hmm. but yeah we just want to bring that in like so just so it lines up perfectly like that and we just want to bring this down on default snapping now of course it now, of course, it's completely up to you what you paint it right here, but I'm going to paint it this lovely orange because, I don't know, orange and red just goes really well together. Now, if your support is starting at least five blocks above the actual ground right here, I recommend having a bit of a diversion right here, as you can see. So if you count up one, two, three, four, five, this is obviously above five right here. So what we're going to do is add a bit of an angled piece here. So the way to do so is go into the eyedropper and just hold shift and click on like so. Now, depending on where it is, you just want to bring it onto a half and maybe lower it down a bit. I'm going to lower it down a bit because really you want it to be a bit away from this connector right here and then we're just going to rotate it around 22.5 degrees right here is normally what I go through the 22.5 degrees here although if it is a little bit lower down so maybe about here maybe go for 33 uh, so you know you just go on to 11.3 and 11.5 uh, sorry and do that three times but here we're just going to go for 22.5 degrees so what we're going to do is just rotate that round by once there and bring it down on a half then we can bring this down on default snapping going all the way down into the ground well I say it all the way down but actually we want to just remove this on the end right here because what we want to do is actually have it goes straight at the very last moment. So we can see we've got this gap right here. That's probably an all right gap, maybe a bit much, but we can just go with it here. So we're just going to bring this across on no snapping until it lines up like that and just lower it down. And there we go. We've got that looking all lovely right here. And now let's actually get our footers in. So we just want to go into our primitives. We're going to grab this primitive cylinder right here and we just want to line it up. I'm going to have mine a quarter out of the ground, although of course it depends. You know, you may have bumpy terrain right here, unlike me who's just got flat terrain right here. So obviously it depends on what you're doing, but we're just going to come on to no snapping and try and center this as best as possible. Like I said, this is probably a bit big because you want it to be the very last moment, as you can see over here and over here and over here. But you know, it's not the end of the world. It's a tiny little straight bit. Anyway, we're also going to place a barrel in like so. So we're just going to raise that up on like that. Now, if it's upside down, make sure to rotate it around 45 degrees. You want it to have this bit of a lip right here. And we're just going to bring this up to whatever amount, whatever feels good. And then we're just going to bring that across again and place one in like so. These barrels, we want to paint the exact same color that we've done for the actual supports right here 
And then these right here, it depends on what color you want to do. But the color that I find is best is going for this color right here and also just setting that to a concrete. And that seems to look quite nice. Although feel free to go for any color you want. I'll chuck the color up on the screen, of course. But, you know, really you can go for whatever color you want on your footers. But there we go, guys. That's how to do the angled support right here. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do all of these because, of course, it's literally just the same thing, just bigger and bigger and bigger. So don't worry about that. You can work it out by just rewatching the tutorial, I guess. For most of these right here, I'm just going to go. Then we build the rest of the support because there's no point in me showing you the same thing 14 times. One thing I do want to quickly mention, though, while we're actually doing this right here is our chain lift right here. Now, of course, the chain lift doesn't just magically stop right here and, you know, somehow appear down at the bottom. We need an actual kind of rail or I guess a carriage. I don't know what you call this right here, but some sort of way for the actual chain lift to get back down to the bottom. So you can see right here that this sort of rail starts all the way from here and it goes all the way down to this box where the chain lift starts again. So to do so, what I first recommend doing is getting your box like so, lining this up and just placing this somewhere around your chain lift, maybe extend it out a little bit more and just lower it down like that, maybe around there. That will look quite nice. And then for our rail going all the way up, I recommend getting a bar right here and it completely depends on, you know, your edge case right here. But I recommend going about um, 25 degrees because of course this is a 30 degree thing and we don't want it to be following it exactly because this drop down here is obviously, you know, a lot lower than this right here. So we don't want it to completely follow it. So we're just going to set our rotation here on custom to 25. We'll just bring this round like so. Something to mention is that I do want to bring this round on 45 degrees and just put it like this. So it's actually wider, you know, rather than, I guess, taller. I, I, I guess, you know, that's all of this sort of thing. And then we just want to line this up on no snapping. It should be pretty close, not close enough that it goes through it, but about there, let's say. And then we can just bring this going all the way up to the very top right here. And, you know, with a bit of luck, it will line up. It probably won't line up first time. And if it doesn't, don't worry. Just, you know, change that rotation a little bit and keep on doing some other stuff. But you can see because I've already done this. Well, actually, I've got it wrong. Uh, so <laughs> that's a good start. Yeah, it seems like she went for a bit of a different rotation, but just keep on retrying this as many times as you need right here. And eventually you'll get it so it actually lines up properly instead of just, you know, connecting into nothing. So it should just connect into the end of your chain lift, just as I've done right here, very roughly around that sort of area. And it'll look pretty good. So that's all of our chain lift sorted out. Let's get on to some inversions. Now for this loop in particular right here, we're going to be adding three pieces of supports on each side right here. So we've got one, which is for this higher part. This would support the top half of the loop right here. Then we've got this lower one which would support the bottom half of the loop right here. And last of all, we've got a third support right here, which actually, you know, supports the end of the loop. Or I guess the start of the loop on the opposite side. And you can see the sort of configuration that we've got right here. So first, as always, what we want to do is bring our primitive cuboid right here. And we're just going to bring this up, make sure precision build mode is on. And we want to just line this up kind of randomly. It really doesn't matter where you place this because to be honest, it's not going to be perfect. But what we want to do is just come in here with no snapping and no snapping on rotation as well. And we're going to try and line this up as best as possible. Now, there's no real, you know, technique to this or magic sort of thing to do. So just basically keep on trying. You'll get it there eventually. And once you've lined this up right here, we just want to rotate it around a little bit more. This is going to take just quite a lot of, you know, trial and error. And you'll eventually get it right here. We want it to, to actually stick out, as you can see right here. So it actually comes around like so. So you want it to kind of stick out a little bit and kind of protrude out like so. And then once you've done that, you can add an extra one on like so. Now, I've actually gone for a bit more of a steep angle right here than I have here, but it can't completely just depends on your situation. There's no perfect way to do this. And honestly, it's a bit hard to actually show you how to do it on a tutorial because every loop's going to be different. And honestly, I've connected in a different place. So it's going to be different, isn't it? So we're just going to paint that like so, not with concrete, bloody hell, with metal. I always do that. <laughs> and then we're just going to come in right here by holding shift and click on, on our eyedrop right here. We want to search for a cylinder and we're going to start to get in our things right here. So we just want to get this cylinder right here on a quarter snapping and on 45 degrees snapping right here on our rotation. We just want to line this up best as possible with the edge right here, something like that. And then what we can do is bring these out so that, you know, it actually connects in. I've done this so it's got like a double support right here, so this support can come through in the middle, although I've definitely seen loops where it's just one support coming out of here. You know, I've just modeled this off of one photo I found or a couple photos I found on, you know, Google. But if we just go on to 11.25 degrees and make sure we're on a half snapping right here, we just bring this out like so, bring it round, and we want it to basically just come out by one like that. And then we can bring this coming all the way down into the ground 
around like so. Do the exact same for the other side, and there you go. And as you can see, this looks a lot different than this one over here. This one's, you know, sticking out a lot more than this one, but again, it completely depends on where you connect in. I kind of like this connection here because it looks like it more supports the top part, although really, again, depends on what you're doing here. To make this look a bit more flush right here, we just want to come in again like so, and we just want to grab this sphere right here, and on a quarter snapping, we just bring that along until it connects in, and then we can paint them all our support colour. And there we go, absolutely wonderful, and just as we've done before here, we want to add in our footers, except from we're going to do these ones angled. It really depends on what you want to do right here, but I've done these angled just because, I don't know, I couldn't really find many photos of uh, B&M footers, to be honest. Uh, maybe I just didn't look far enough, but I couldn't tell if they're angled, or if they're flat, or what, 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 or what, you know. Maybe it depends on different coasters, but I I've just kind of gone with angled ones right here, just because it was really hard to make it look good with it being straight, and with the amount of forces, I would imagine that this is what they'd do. I have no clue again, you know, don't take my word for this right here. But if we just add some barrels in like so, uh, to actually add in these points right here, again, these are upside down, so if you end up getting them upside down so that they don't have the lip, rotate it round by 45 degrees, bring it up, and you should have that lip again, but we're just going to place in these on here and here, and then I'll be back in a second. And there we go, that's that one support right here. Now, what you need to do is on the opposite side of your loop, try and as accurately as possible copy it. So, moving on, let's do our lower support right here now. This one's a lot more easier and difficult at the same time, in a way, because what we want to do is basically just do the exact same as what we did here, except for when we want to have these at an angle. So, if we just come in like this, just as we've done before, we can just rotate this round on no snapping and no snapping, and we just want to line this up. It depends on where you want to connect this in, but I'm just going to go about here. We're just going to line everything up, but this time we're going to have a bit of an angle, so I'm just going to go like that sort of angle. It wants to kind of connect in just about the same as these. So as you can see, if we just bring that down, that's not quite enough. So we're just going to add it a bit more. You're aiming for this support to kind of terminate in between these right here, although you're not going to get it perfect, let's be honest. You know, you'll never get it perfect, but you can try your best. Something like that looks quite nice. So I think I'm going to go with something a little bit like that. So if we just place that in right here, we want to add one that's basically vertical right here. It doesn't have to be completely vertical. But we want to add a vertical piece in like so. What we want to do is now come into here, grab our cylinder like so, and we just want to bring this down into the ground, and just as we've done before here, so I'm not going to really show you, we're just going to bring those cylinders going all the way down into the ground with an angled footer. So, something just like that, and then for this last one right here, I don't think there's really much point in showing you, because it's just a flat one, exactly as we've done right here, just make sure that these are angled like this, seeing as it's going up right here, and you can just put one of those in somewhere around here. Now, for this last one right here, I'm going to very quickly go over this right here, because we've done all of these so many times right here, you've already seen all of these techniques basically on here already. So just to quickly go over a couple of things, for example, this support right here, this is the main one I wanted to look at, because this is actually going above this track right here, we've extended out this piece a little bit more and add this straight right here. That then splits out into two different pieces right here. We have this piece, which is slightly angled so that the train can fit through, and this one, which is quite angled so that the train can fit through on this side without chopping people's heads off. To be honest, this may be a bit of a clearance problem, and this might be a bit more angled, so it kind of connects in over here. I just went a bit random, you know. Again, we've got the same angled footers, and for this one right here, what I did is just had it flat, going all the way flat down like so. And then we've got this splitting into two, just as we've done over here, except from instead of having it angled, we've got it flat, seeing as this is just what it looks like, I guess. But anyway, guys, I hope this has been helpful right here. I've shown you as many pits as I can right here. Hopefully, this has really helped you out. If it did help you out, I'd really appreciate it. Like, that'd be amazing. Speaking of amazing, here's all of my channel members on the screen right now. Thank you all so much for supporting me. That's absolutely incredible. If you'd like to become a channel member yourself, it's only 99p or $1.30 for the cheapest option, and you get early access videos, early access to showcasing park streams, sneak peeks, and so, so much more. So if you want to support me that little bit extra, make sure to go check that out down below by clicking that join button. Of course, make sure to subscribe and leave a like, hit that notification bell if you want to be notified next time I'm actually uploading or going live. If this video hits 100 likes, I'll do a tutorial on how to build wooden coaster supports. Mm. So don't forget to do that. I hope you'll have an absolutely amazing day, and I'll see you all in another one. Goodbye!